Greetings, programs, and welcome into another episode of the War Within Alpha Dungeon International. I'm Sean. I'm here with my co-caster, Ease. We are going to rock through this one. Ease, how you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here. Like you said, this is once in a lifetime opportunity to do a War Within Alpha Dungeon Imitational. Amazing. You nailed that. I am really impressed. No practice <laughs> at all. You nailed that. Um, <laughs> definitely the better of us. We're going to start with the Stone Vault. We're going to jump right into the action here. We have a team on deck, and we are going to rock and roll. Stone Vault is one of the two dungeons that appears in the, um, the Dark Rising. The Ringing Dark Deeps. Ringing Deeps. Ringing Deeps. There it is. Thank you. And uh, we're getting rid of the roll here. So we, it looks like we have a Prot Warrior, two Death Knights for DPS, a, an Arms Warrior, and a Resto Shaman as they're going here, and they're launching quick down this hallway. You want to be careful here in this hallway. It's tempting to pull big because the mobs are so tightly packed together, but they have a fear cast that if it goes off can cause disaster. He's, do you see a lot of triple melee DPS comps coming out through the alpha? I mean, there's a lot of exciting and new hero towns for those uh, those melee DPS classes. And so, like you said, there's a lot of fears in here, not only in these packs, but we'll see it later on on bosses as well. Uh, but that doesn't seem to uh, to fear or strike fear in these guys. Huh? They just keep going. That's and right. Yeah, uh, this, this, uh, this tank is known for being a little bit of a wild card. Uh, he tends to pull without concern or care for his healer's mana, which hopefully we don't see in this run of the dungeon. Um, but maybe we will. The frontals coming out from those large colossuses as well want to be pointed away from the group, which it looks like they've been done. Uh, so the positioning they have a here... fear goes good. out! Oh, no! We missed a... And... Go ahead. Ooh, that's a good save from the tank. That was very close from the tank being feared into that frontal, but uh, managed they made to, it. Yeah, managed to pull it out just at the last second. That fear got off. The frontals are happening. Things are moving here, and we're approaching the first boss of the dungeon. We are right into the action. These dungeons do not waste any time. And we're about to fight the Earthen Defense and Neutralization Automaton, and otherwise also known, known as, as Edna. Edna. That's <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ease, you want to break this boss down for us? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's a big a bit of a, a kind of... Really, you want to make sure that you know where you're positioned, right? There's a, a frontal... Uh, that mm -hmm. you, if you paid attention, you were able to see it just a, a second ago before the bus was actually pulled. There's also these right there. You can see it on screen. Um, and uh, you got to make sure that you spread out so that not more than one player uh, is hit by that at a time. There's also these rocks that come out of the ground, uh, which you are, have a bit of a circle around them, which if you step inside the circle, uh, they actually detonate and they do damage to you. And so it, it seems like this tank knows what they're doing and they're bringing these, these lasers that are targeted to a player. If you hit one of the spikes with this laser, it actually breaks the, la the, the beams. Yeah, it's a good way to avoid the, the player damage instead of getting too close to the pillar to break it with the beams. And it looks like this group is making quick work of Edna. She's going down fast and it seems like they had no difficulty at all with this boss and the stone vaults are underway folks the first boss is down no bugs to report and we're getting ready now they've chosen to go left now my mother told me when i was a young child in any situation in a video game when given the option between left and right always choose left i don't know why maybe it's because she was left-handed maybe because once she found a chest on the left-hand path in a zelda game but she said go left so this group's going left <laughs> I'm a I'm a strong believer in saying that you go left, but then you go right. I'm a huge believer in that tactic, uh, not just to throw off your teammates, but also possibly throwing off yourself so that you can keep yourself on your toes. That's a really good uh, a really good tactic. It doesn't seem like this tank is in in need of that. However, just keeps pulling. Uh, the shaman is trying to catch up with these this hyper mobile warrior class that has charges and leaps, um, but uh, they're able to to catch up here. Tell yeah. us about this layout of this dungeon here. So the dungeon is laid out. It's a uh, a forge type uh, building structure, and it has a main room that you go into where we just fought Edna. And then there's branching offshoots to the left, right, and straight through to the back. And as you go through the dungeon, each wing will be cleared, and then you will return back to the main dungeon in one of my favorite dungeon uh, mechanics ever, the minecart. 
Um, so it's really neat to see that happen. Blizzard put in a, a fast skip, something that could have been sorely used in the Throne of the Tides, I think, uh, for how often we return back to oh, the yeah. middle there. Yeah, and we're fighting through here. You see a mixture of uh, Earthen, and these are the, the, new, the new models for these Skadden, Skadren, um, which, if you were a lore fan, you know is a, a, cla a race that has been around for a long time, but is making their first real appearances here in the War Within. And as you mentioned, this tank does not slow down. The healer's mana is desperately low, and we're coming up to another boss very soon here. Surely they will stop to let them drink before they pull this next boss. Uh, as we engage one of the last packs prior to Skarmorak, who is coming up next. And there's a few dangerous mobs here. There's, a, You can see there's a Void Storm being channeled, which is basically just a big AoE. We see, even see the healer popping a Link Totem here to make sure that everyone stayed up. Uh, the tank does decide to uh, clear the entire room. Not only, as we can note out, it's good to clear this room to have space for the boss. You don't necessarily need to, but right behind this ad pack is where the aforementioned uh, carts will be spawning. So it is beneficial to clear out this pack so that you can get back to the main room quickly and we're about to pull the skarmorak boss here this boss has a few different mechanics that are fun to play with and they require some some positioning and timing in place you're going to see little rocks that shatter off of the body after he slams the tank those rocks will radiate damage but they need to be dps down because once they're dps down they give you an absorb circle uh, or sorry a, 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 a buff circle buff orb that you can take that will make you do extra damage to the shield that the uh the boss then generates by consuming scrap around the room and you can see here it is desperate for the timer but the tank has decided to stop very patiently stop and give this healer time to drink uh he definitely looks like this is something he was excited to do and i was gonna say <laughs> does he seem patient he's yeah. jumping up and down desperately <laughs> <laughs> That's the most patient I've ever seen this tank be while we wait for drinks. And the boss is now underway. So you can see those little crystal shards off to the sides. The DPS are going to want to break those down because once they're done, if you look to the right, you can see the purple orbs. When you pick the orb up, you get a bonus, a stacking bonus damage to the shield that Skyrimark is about to get. But they also put a dot on you. So you want to not pick them up too soon. And here, here you can see now the boss is about to shatter more of the orbs out giving us the opportunity to get some more damage coming in on the shield. Here comes the shield now, and we should see, yes. We should see a lot of damage boosts coming in here. The warrior tank has a, a couple of the orbs on him, and the DKs as well, and they are just absolutely melting through the shield on Skarmorak here, uh, and the healer managing to keep them all up. But the warrior, the DPS warrior is getting dangerously low on health. Ooh, that was close, he, but managed to make it out uh, alive. At the end of that phase, I suspect a victory rush was used. It is a dangerous phase there, uh, not only because there's a amount of pulsing damage, but if you don't time these uh, void fragments right, after they spawn, they only last for 15 seconds. And so if you spawn them too early, they'll disappear before you have a chance to use this debuff on the shield. So you got to make sure to kill the mobs close enough to the intermission so that you can keep the buff up for the entirety of that shield face yeah it's an excellent it's, it's a fun boss mechanic and I, something i've noticed in the war within as a whole is that they've really looked for ways to make the bosses engaging in a way that doesn't also feel punishing you can see this translating to mythic plus and having it be a mechanic that would be fun to do uh and, and i think that that bodes really well for for the future of the War Within dungeons as we carry on into the retail game. We are now on the other side of the map. We took those minecarts back, as we mentioned. And I do want to just quickly highlight the minecarts. It was a, you jump in the cart, it was a black screen, you're back in the center. Now for Mythic Plus, I think that is perfect. That is how that should function. But I would like to see in Normal and Heroic, maybe a little cutscene, maybe a little animation mm. where you get in that minecart, a little frog's adventure, a little toad's adventure. And, uh, and, you know, you get the, just to, to see something. Um, but please, for Mythic Plus, keep it the way it is. That is perfect. And we are now clearing the trash on the way up to our next boss. And uh, I don't know if you were able to catch that previous. The, the last hall we were in were a bunch of void-infused creatures. Here we see earthens as well as some uh, big uh, mechanical uh, 
structures, not structures, but uh, suits uh, that these uh, Earth are spending time in. And so there's kind of different theming. Uh, there's some some frontals that you got to stick out here. Uh, a, a big, they actually go jumping around these uh, mechanics, as you can see. As uh, so you got to watch out so that you don't get hit by their big jump, their big leap. Um, we know that this warrior is a big fan of jumping. No jumping now, though. Just a throw, not even a charge. They, have they lost their steam? What's going on here, Drax? It seems like they didn't know what they were coming into as they rounded that corner. Almost like he was unprepared for that pull. Uh, you, you, his, his shield charge wasn't up. So maybe he was thinking, if I just hit this heroic throw, I'll be okay. And you're seeing here as well, the DKs are doing masterful work with their grips as they're pulling these mobs in. And it's, uh, it's making quick work for the grouping up. And this pack here, much like the last pack in the previous room is being pulled, I suspect to clear the space for that minecart after they killed the upcoming boss, the Forge Speakers. That's right. This is an area where you technically could skip some trash as they're uh, patrolling, uh, but uh, it's worth clearing out at least for that skip. And these Forge Leaders that we see up here, these big suits, uh, have a big frontal that is not only good for you to to watch out for but it's also a foreshadowing of what we'll see in the forge speakers the forge speakers being a duo uh, two uh, different uh, speaker Doralith and speaker brock and they kind of play off of each other mechanically which we'll see here uh, in a minute uh, you gotta watch out for these mobs however because not only do they do a frontal they also do a termination protocol which is a bit of a nuke in a sense you gotta gotta make sure that you're not uh, in those in those uh, circles do those mobs remind you of mega man at all um specifically mega man x on the super yes <laughs> oh yeah i spent a lot of time in that game man yeah. Yeah, it's the cannon arm for me that that does it they also <laughs> remind me of mecha torque again oh, yeah. no time for drinking this time halfway through the mana uh, on the healer but uh, the the warrior tank decides to pull and you'll see here we have activate ventilation which you'll see these vents on the side blowing up and it'll blow these little pools these puddles of lava that you can't stand in because they'll do a lot of damage. And you, if you're, you might have seen that actually before we talk about the laser right here, you'll see a big, ooh, that's a box going straight through the room. Got to watch out for that as uh, Speaker Dorlita, nope, that's Speaker Brock, I think, um, shoots it across the room. And you'll see here in a second that Speaker Dorlita will do something different with this box unless they manage to kill off this boss before they even get there. Um, yeah, it looks like, so as you mentioned, Speaker Dorito has a mechanic where they'll put the box in the middle of the room and fill the room into a big explosion that you have to try and get to the edges of. But as you mentioned, the DPS on this team is absolutely blasting. They are working at a world first level and they actually beat the mechanic and are heading back through to the middle of the room to go to the final wing and head their way down to the last boss, High Speaker Irik. This team is crazy. We've seen this tank before in the war within Alpha Dungeon International. Um, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Nailed it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it just, they just, their speed incarnate. They refuse to stop and wait. Healers don't often come back for a second to go. <laughs> Absolutely. And you see here, we're back in the first boss room again. We've been back here a couple of times, and now we're going to the last room that was previously closed. I just have to point out that you did call one of the bosses Speaker Dorito. Is that a new nickname we're going to see going forward? I uh, I think so. I, I, I do. I hope so. <laughs> uh, I'd like to point out here, there, these there's, there's two different things in this hallway that are extremely dangerous. There are yeah. earthen that summon totems that explode. You need to either burn the earthen caster down himself, which eliminates a totem, or burn the totem down. But we also have this charge mechanic. And something that is really new in the War Within is Blizzard going out of their way to, like, overemphasize a mechanic. There was a large purple line on the ground with an arrowhead at the tip to say, hey, this is the direction we're going. There's a charge mechanic happening here. And we saw it similar in the Cinderbrew metery with the big red lines from the uh, B Wranglers to indicate a frontal. And I am really, really happy to see them putting in this kind of. There it is again. The, Ooh, the arrows. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I think it's really good. It's great. Not only is it a a a 
indication on the mob, but also on the on the floor itself. Uh, this is a spicy pull right here. You're talking, like we said, there are uh, not only these chargers, but also these casters. I haven't seen any of these uh, totems going off just yet. They're just pumping through these mobs. But I know there's a pack coming up here that is can be extremely deadly if, for example, your healer or your tank uh, gets uh, stuck in one of those charges. It might just be game over. Uh, exactly. But it seems like they're able to dodge just fine. Yeah, this tank, uh, this warrior tank can only be described as reckless. Um. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and here we go. This year pull could have been a double pull. However, I know we have seen in the practice rounds that they had attempted to double pull this pack before. And the the stacking of the totem player, the totem casters, really, really did a number on them. So it looks like they're playing it a bit safer here. And they're breaking this pull into two, which is something that we'll probably see especially on fortified weeks um because those earthen totems are a they just they just, they just shred the team uh how, let's do a healer mana check health check is quite low on the healer we have both dk's popping uh oh. absorb shields on them and the man oh the healer is down the healer has yeah. gone down and we've lost the arms where she's on the healer's back up and this pull is getting spicy maybe the tank should have <sighs> waited for everyone to be stable before making this pull it's almost like he doesn't care and it's like you said, it was that totem that went off that got that killing blow on the healer. These big mobs might seem intimidating, but really the only dangerous thing they do is big explosions on the ground. And if you're good at sidestepping, it's not a, it's not really that dangerous. But those totems can really get you. If you're already half low, you might get one shot by those totems. Yeah. And we are now, it looks like we are waiting for mana at this point. You can see some checking of the talents to just to make sure that they're still <laughs> there it's good to do that and we're about to this, engage Go ahead. yeah high speaker eric 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 is easier just eric um i eric, i was about to say eric we're, the we're void eric the void <laughs> uh and it is an interesting uh boss there is a frontal cone which is pretty easy to just step out of it there's also this void corruption which gives all players a debuff which you have to go close to these void tear tears to actually get rid of uh, the danger here though is that when you get closer to these void tears if you get too close you get instantly killed it is a one shot uh, and they do pull you in so if you dally a little too long it, not a danger for these guys, however. Wow, I didn't have time to finish <laughs> <laughs> explaining the tactics. <laughs> yeah, they uh, this team, the absolute blasters. Possible some nerfs coming in for DKs, hard to say. Uh, but these are still normal dungeons here on the alpha. Uh, Eves, ease this one. Eves, ease this one. Eves, <laughs> Eves. Eves dropping. <laughs> this was the stone vault in the war within Alpha Dungeon International. What are your thoughts on the dungeon overall? I really like it. It's uh, got strong theming. Uh, it has, you know, the skips, which we're here for. We love skips when we can see that in uh, Mythic Plus Dungeons. Uh, really fun bosses. I'm, ex I'm especially fond and excited to see more of Speaker Dorito. And not only because of the funny name, but also because I think it'll be a fun uh, counterplay between uh, dodging out of these the ways of these big boxes and and using the space in the room i can't wait to see this on on mythic plus keys yeah it's gonna be a great time i as well i think so far stone vault for me and all of the dungeons up to this point 10 out of 10 no notes blizzard is cooking and what they're making is delicious i'm definitely here for it uh, and that's it for this episode of the war within alpha dungeon international but we will be back with more folks we have the dark flame cleft coming up next